Hi guys, it's Andy, the Expedition Hiker, and today we're talking about how to pack a rucksack. Now this is for those people that are like doing DAV or getting into camping and backpacking. So I'm going to get a rucksack. This stuff is not really expensive stuff, it's generally what my students take out on DAV. Let's pack the rucksack up and let's pack it up properly. So I've got all the gear you need all around me. That I would use to pack for DV. The only thing I haven't got with me is food, but other than that, we've got everything we need. So, first things first, I've got a normal rucksack. This is a Your Heart Nepal 65 rucksack. Now, it does come with two compartments a lower compartment, an upper compartment, the upper compartment being the biggest section. But most of these rucksacks are zippable, the section. So, unzip the section because that will become apparent in a moment. So the first thing I want to do is get a cat liner, polishing bag for the beginner backpack kit, rather than get dry bags and specialised bags. Just get a good refuge bag, good quality polythene bin liner. Get a larger one, so it'll fit in the hole in your pack. So I'm going to feed that through the hole of my pack. And the next thing I want is my sleeping bag. I'm going to put my sleeping bag at the bottom. Now, fortunately, it comes in this polythene bag, and I'm going to use that polythene bag. I'm going to put that at the base. So I've got two polythene bags at the moment, but what I want to do is that when I'm going out hiking, I my sleeping bag is crucial that it stays dry. Now, these are synthetic bags. They are quite bulky, but the things in the day, you need it to keep dry. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to double back so I've got my second bag here. Then what I've got is I've got this big compression bag. If I try and put that in there, it's going to take two thirds of my rucksack up. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get it out of the bag and take the bag out of its compression sack. Now I don't want to lose this, I don't want to throw it away, I want to keep it for a few years. But here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to crunch it together as I feed it into the rucksack. And I'm pushing it down to the bottom section. As I say, I've split the two sections apart. It's now one large compartment. So I'm feed it in. As I'm feeding it in, I generally, what I do is I twist it a little bit. And that just takes some of the excess air out, packs it into the rucksack a little bit easier. And once I've got it all in, then I'm going to get that inner polythene bag. I'm going to push it down as much as I can. So what I want to do is I've avoid any voids. So I don't have any little gaps here. So pushing the sleeping bag down uh, takes out the air, fills in all the voids in your rucksack. And B, you've still got quite a lot of kit to get in your rucksack. So you don't want it, your sleeping bag taking most of the space. So I'm gonna get the inner polythene bag. I'm gonna wrap it up, the one that I had for the sleeping bag. I'm gonna push it down. You can hear that squeak when I'm, you can hear the air coming out of it. Okay, so push the air out. So now I'm ready to start packing the rest of my gear. But what I want to do is start packing the gear I'm not going to use at the start of the hike. You know, think about the items you need essential to so like maybe your water boots, your food that you're going to have in the daytime, drink, map and compass, a first aid kit. They need to be in spaces near the top of the rucksack or in pockets if you've got them. Now, other items like your dinner set, your stove, clothes for the evening, things like that, your toiletries, and other items similar to that you're not going to need until you get to the outside. So there's no point in packing them at the top. Fit them down to the, from the bottom or in the middle after we've packed the sleeping bag. So I've got my clothes. I've got a nice warm jumper for the evenings, or even when it gets colder. I've got a spare t-shirt. Got some socks and underwear. I haven't got them, and I don't think I need to show you them. Now, what I've got here is I've got socks and bags for life. Now, rather than again buying separate dry bags, it's better off to buy these bags for life. They're a little bit stronger than the cheap ones. They're about, what, 25p in the UK? And the other thing is, I've got, as you can see, four different colours. So that means that when I put them into my bag, when I look into my bag, I think, oh, the white bag, or the, this bag, has got my clothes in. That bag's got my food in. That bag's got my other bits in, my cutlery and everything else. It makes it easier to be able to work it out rather than having seven bags all the same colour. We put our clothes in this bag.
push it into my rucksack. That's going around the middle section. What I want to do is soft things need to go towards the back. What I'm aiming to do is not have things like my plate or knife and fork sticking in my back because I put them towards the back of the rucksack. I have a nice soft back. So push that down. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at the other item I don't need straight away. So I've got my dinner plate, cup, mug, knife, fork and spoon. Okay, these are items I'm generally not going to use straight away. On top of that, obviously when I'm on campsite and my group, if I'm in a DAV, one person in the group or two people may have a sponge, some washing up liquid and a tea towel. Now put this washing up liquid in a separate bag. So washing up liquid, small bottle, don't need to take the whole washing up fear of liquid with you. Take it in a small bottle. You get those bottles from my super drug for three or four of them for about a pound. Little sponge, all I've done is one of those foam sponges, I've got it down into half. Put me in a polythene bag. It's dry at the moment, but once you've washed your pots and everything else, that's going to be wet. So you want to put it with anything else wet in your rucksack. The best thing is, again, avoiding the voids. So put that inside your cup. So it fills that space up that was inside the cup. And again, tea towel, I can push that into my bowl. So again, I'm reducing the voids. And I'm creating space into the rucksack. So I'm going to put these in. Now these, like I said, we'll put these towards the front. We don't want them sticking in our back. You can force them down into the gaps. Then our mug. And look for where the gaps are in the rucksack as you're putting those items in. Because you want to try and get all your gear in. And you could quite easily get all this gear in this rucksack. So in my top ray, I'm going to put in my side pocket because it's quite long. Okay, so we're reducing the amount of things. Next thing I've got is my stove. Okay, so I've got my stove in there, and I've got obviously the gas bottle for the stove. So I'm going to put that in there because I'm not going to need it right away. Okay, now we're starting to look right. The items that we need that's more essential. As your group or a DV group, or if you're going out camping for the first time, whatever, in the evening, you might be a bit bored. So if you're with somebody, or even by yourself, you can play solitaire or some card games. And it's an easy pack to pack away as an entertainer. Pack of tissues, I always take spare tissues. You never know when you need them. Now we've got hats and gloves here. Now that's, even in the summer, it can be quite chilly first thing in the morning or even at night. So hats and gloves are always useful. And also, come the summer months or spring to autumn, sun cream is also useful. So pack it away together. And there, and I'm going to put these all in a separate bag. I'll pack that away. My hat and gloves, I want these move towards the top because I may need to use them in the daytime if it gets colder. Again, the suntan lotion as well. So I'm packing them into my rucksack. Okay, now here I've got my waterproof jacket and waterproof trousers. Now you do need to carry both of them, especially if you're doing DV, it's part of your kit list. On top of that, I've got a survival bag, headlamp, and a whistle. Now, these two can go on the side pocket or even the top pocket. This one, as it's a survival bag, generally you're not going to use it, but on like DV, you need to have a survival bag, and they are useful in case of an emergency. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pack that down the back of my whistle. We've got that space. Now, waterproof, they need to stay at the top because obviously one of the essential items, you never know when it's going to rain, but it's best to be prepared and have the gear with you. My first aid kit, I'm going to put that in my side pocket, because I always need that just in case. My toiletries, so when I'm on the campsite, and a towel. So again, I'm going to pack them away, looking for these gaps and voids now. You can see, I've packed most of my stuff away, and I've still got plenty of space in the rucksack, so packing away correctly, we'll get it all in. So, as I said, whistle, and headlamp and put in the side. My whistle is for emergency purposes. Headlamp obviously can be for emergency purposes, but is also for on the campsite. And it also can be your lantern inside your tent. Now map and compass, that needs to be right at the top that I need it for navigation. So water bottle. So we can put the water bottle in the opposite pocket. Okay, 
Now, when you're doing DV and beginning camping, I suggest you carry at least one litre of water. Do you remember though, for every litre of water you carry, it weighs just over two pounds in weight. Okay, so I've got my tent, I've got my walk poofs, got a bag here, that's going on the outside, and I've got my navigation. And that is basically all I need to pack now. Now, if you are doing DV, if you're in your group, then one person will carry the stove, one person would carry the food, and then, then at least two people would carry the tent, and we split the tent off. So, I'm gonna pack the tent now. Now, the thing is then, Dave, I've already packed the stove, and the thing about it is I would have put my food in here as well. So generally, you will be packing everything. You'll be taking one in the other. So I'm just showing you that I can pack everything in there, tent, stove, you on your trip, then you will get it in the rucksack if I can get all of it. So first thing, I've got the poles to the tent. The poles to the tent, I'm going to take them out and I'm going to separate them. I'm going to stick them down the back of the rucksack and pull them down the gap. Okay? So it'll fit down the gap of the rucksack down there, outside of the polythene bag. So next, after I've got the poles out, next thing I want to do is get my pegs out. And one person generally would carry the poles and pegs, and the other person would carry the inner tent. Now here's my pegs. I can put these in the side pocket as well. So they're easier for me to find when I get to the campsite. So you need to get your pegs out of your rucksack as soon as you get to the campsite. The first thing you really want to do is put the tent on. And that's one of the reasons why we put the tent towards the top and they're all together. So I'm going to pack this up again here, push it into it to the top of the rucksack now. Now I'm filling out all these gaps again. Okay, I've still got a bit of space in here, and that's going to be great for my water tubes. Water tubes need to be right at the top in case you need them, or it could be an extra layer to keep you warm if you get cold. Water jacket generally can be used as a windstop. So I've got my water trousers, put them in there as well. Cut that away. Again, pushing the air out so I can get it into the rucksack. And there you go. Right. So, as you can see, I've put the whole tent in this rucksack, and I've got my stove, and I've also got all the rest of the items I need. So, if I can get it all in this rucksack, then I'm sure you can too. All I've got is map and compass. Well, the compass I'm going to put around my neck so, so I can navigate throughout the day. My map, again, I can put that in a pocket so I've got in the hood, or sometimes we call it the brain, of the rucksack. So if we put it in the top pocket, so I need to get to my map at any point. I've got all my gear packed away. So I'm going to pull, pull all the straps tight, and you want to secure the rucksack as easy as possible. My rucksack fully packed. The only thing I'm missing is my roll mat. Now there's numerous ways that people put their roll mat onto the back. Some people will put it on the top and you can obviously connect it with these straps here. Some people may connect it to the bottom like that. But the best thing to do is connect it like that. Okay? Reasons why? Well, generally, if you've got your rooks out there, that's making your rooks out wider. Okay? So it's harder for you to walk through, especially if you've got a foam mat like this. It gets ripped and torn, and by the time you get to the campsite, half of it's missing. Now, uh, if you do the exact same on the bottom, you can have that exact same problem that is slightly wider than your rucksack. And it is a problem that people try and get through styles with the other bottom of the rucksack, and they end up struggling to get through the style because of that problem. So the best way is, and this is a tried and tested way, as I used to be in the armed forces, and this is the way we used to do it in the armed forces. So they wouldn't do it, they wouldn't teach you this way to do it in the armed forces if it wasn't useful. So you put it that way, it's not making my rucksack any wider than it was before. So all I need to do is get some straps, attach it to here. Now fortunately there's another string on here, so all I'm gonna do is then attach it to the string as well. So there's no chance it's gonna slip away and fall away. Tight, tight. The tie knot, bobbing about. 
Those can come under them, not Scott. Because I'm sure he can undo the knot once you get to the campsite. So, my moving around some looks like right. The other thing is, is that when you on your walk and you think, oh, I need to take the rucksack off for 10 minutes, get some food out, drink, whatever else, get your waterproofs out. Now, if you put your rucksack down like that, like that, now my rucksack is not going on the ground. Roll mat is taking the, the weight of the rucksack. And by doing that, it means that my rucksack's not going to get wet and muddy. Because the worst thing is, is that A, your rucksack gets muddy and wet and you're carrying it and then obviously you can get create wet spots because water dripping down onto your back. Now the other thing is, is that once you get to the campsite, you may well put your rucksack inside your tent. Now the inside of your tent is nice and dry and clean because you want to sleep in that area. And if you put a wet, muddy rucksack inside it, it's going to make it very dirty very fast. Right, okay, so that is how to pack a rucksack. So if you are a beginner backpacker or you're into DUV and you're going out on your first expedition, maybe bronze expedition in the next few months, then this is a good way to pack your rucksack. Now your leaders might say something slightly different, but generally this is the best way to do it. And as I've already pointed out, you can pack all your gear into it. Right, okay, with that, I'm going to leave it here. So hopefully you've got something from this. And if you're just getting into backpacking and you're thinking about how you pack your rucksack better, then this is the way to do it. So it's nice, comfortable on your back while you're wearing it. And then the heavier things and the things you need essentially at the top. You can go out and have a great first camp. Many more to come. If you found any useful information out of this, then as I say, click the like and add a comment. And ask any questions you need to know about further bits about this equipment. Until next time, take care. I'll see you soon. Bye bye, hikers.